Today I've got a nice product to look at. And so this comes from the GRE preparation that the channel assistant is doing, and he's streaming a lot of that over on the second channel. So make sure to check that out if you're interested. So what we wanna to do today is compute the limit as n goes to infinity of the product as k goes from one to n of one plus k over n to the power one over k. And we're gonna use the following tool and that is the natural log of one plus x. Well, that's the antiderivative of one over one plus x. But then we can expand one over one plus x using a geometric series. That's going to be the sum as m goes from zero to infinity of minus one to the m, x to the m. That's because it's a geometric series where the common ratio is negative x. And then we can take term by term antiderivatives, leaving us with the sum as m goes from one to infinity, minus one to the m plus one, x to the m over m, where I've done a little bit of re-indexing. So the takeaway here is we've got this nice power series expansion for the natural log. Okay, so now let's jump into this limit of the product that we're trying to evaluate. Okay, so generally when you're working with a big product like this, you want to change it into a big sum by taking a log, and that's exactly what we're going to do. So if we set this thing right here maybe equal to L, then what we would really want to look at first is the natural log of L. So that's going to be the limit as n goes to infinity of the sum as k goes from 1 up to n of 1 over k times the log of 1 plus k over n, where I use log rules to bring that 1 over k out front. And obviously, I use log rules in order to turn this product into a sum. Okay. But now let's see that we've got this natural log of one plus something. So we can use our Taylor expansion formula where x is equal to k over n. So that's gonna give us this limit as n goes to infinity. And then we'll have the sum as k goes from one to n of one over k. And then the sum as m goes from one to infinity of well, let's see, we have minus one to the m plus one, and then x to the m, but that's gonna be k to the m over n to the m, and then we have this m in the denominator as well. So we have something that looks like that. Now we're gonna bring the sum as m goes from one to infinity outside of the k sum as well as the limit. So that's going to give us the sum as m goes from 1 to infinity. And then we'll have minus 1 to the m plus 1 over m. And then we'll have the limit as n goes to infinity of, we'll have 1 over n to the m. And then the sum as k goes from 1 up to n of k to the power m minus 1. So it's k to the power m minus 1 because we've got m k's right here and 1 k in the denominator. Okay, now we're going to use a result from a previous video where we did something like a general formula for a power sum. And what we determined is that this general type power sum sums up to something that looks like this. So it's going to be n to the m over m plus something times n to the m minus one plus all the lower order terms. And I'm actually not interested in the lower order terms here because notice I'm putting that all of that over n to the m. So when we divide by n to the m and take the limit as n goes to infinity, all of these lower order terms will just tend towards zero. So let's see, all of these lower order terms will tend towards zero when we take into account that we've got n to the m in the denominator, which means we're left with n to the m over n to the m, that cancels down to one, and we've got this one last copy of m in the denominator, which we can combine with this m. So that leaves us with the sum as m goes from one to infinity of minus one to the m plus one, and then we have m squared. 
And then all that's left is to find the value of this sum. So in the last board we determined not our limit, but the natural log of our limit was the sum as m goes from one to infinity of minus one to the m plus one over m squared. Now we need to determine the value of this sum. So this suspiciously looks like the sum of the reciprocal of the squares, which we've calculated on the channel a few times in the past. So perhaps we can use that result to finish this whole thing off. And let's just recall that result real quick. That says that the sum as m goes from one to infinity of one over m squared is pi squared over six. Okay, so how could we use that result? Well, let's notice that because of our exponent here, all of the odd index terms are positive, whereas all of the even index terms are negative. So we might as well write this as the sum as m goes from one to infinity over all odd numbers of one over m squared minus the sum as m goes from one to infinity over all even numbers of one over m squared. Okay, so again, that's just like splitting it up. Okay, but now I'm gonna do a trick and that trick is to add zero. And I'll add zero by adding the sum over all of the even numbers back into this one, and then subtract the sum over all of the even numbers into this one. Okay, so that's clearly adding zero. And that'll leave me down this column as just the sum over everything. So m equals one to infinity of one over m squared. And then from that, we wanna subtract off two times the sum of all of the even ones. It's two because we've got two copies of it there. Furthermore, we can do a little index changing so that by summing over all of the even ones, we're actually summing from m from one to infinity of one over two m quantity squared. That indexes all of the even natural numbers. Okay, but now from here, we can actually finish this thing off really quickly. Notice this two squares to four in the denominator, giving us a half out front when it cancels with that two. So in the end, we have this is equal to one half times the sum as m goes from one to infinity of one over m squared. By the way, these two combine as we've turned them into themselves. But by the result up there, we see that this is equal to pi squared over 12 because it's half of pi squared over six. So since the natural log of our limit is pi squared over 12, that means our limit is e to that power, in other words, e to the pi squared over 12. And if you've liked this problem, I've got other problems on the channel where we look at products like this. You should check out the one that's on the screen right now if you're interested, and that's a good place to stop.